Listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am God, your God. I bring no charges against you concerning your sacrifices or concerning your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the insects in the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. That's found in Psalm chapter 50, verses 7 through 15. God is taking issue with his people in this psalm that they do not have the right heart when bringing their sacrifices and offerings before him. In the book of Leviticus, the first several chapters, God gives Moses and Israel instructions for the types of sacrifices that they are bring to, they are to bring to him to honor and worship him. And sometimes we read the description of these sacrifices and it seems really weird and strange and odd to us because it's so very different from what we experience and from it's different from how we view worship and, and how we approach God and worship. And it's hard to understand why these were prescribed for Israel. But sometimes I think we get the the purpose of them mixed up. We think that these were things that God needed Israel to bring to him to satisfy him in some way. But the reason God prescribed these offerings for Israel was to meet a need that they had. It was to give them a way of seeking God to meet the various needs that they had due to the consequences of sin and, and death and the negative things of this world brought on by evil and sin. So there were several different types of offerings. There was the, the Ola, which was known as the burnt offering, or another way we could put it would be the ascension offering. And this was where Israel brought the whole entire animal and the whole animal was offered before God. It was a fast. They didn't partake in any part of the offering. And 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 they brought it to God because they needed a revelation from God. They needed guidance. Uh, they needed help to know what to do uh, in a situation. Or they brought it to God as a way of offering their whole selves to God that they wanted to be consecrated fully for the purposes and will of God. And so they were seeking God's will in their life in that situation. There was the grain offering, also known as the minha offering. And, and this offering they, they brought to God when, when they were in need of resources, they needed God's provision for something, or they brought it to God to thank God for providing resources for them. And so they would bring this grain offering offering to God and ask him to, to provide for their needs. Um, there was the Selayim, uh, Selamim offering, um, also uh, known as the peace offering. Uh, this would, would be brought to God in a time when they were troubled, when they were in need of restoration, when they weren't well, when they were sick and they needed healing and salvation. There was the Hata'at offering also known as the sin offering. This they brought to God when there was a separation. Uh, relationships had been torn because of their sin. Uh, uh, relationships were broken and they needed that, that God to restore their relationships. Uh, and then there was the asham offering, also known as the guilt offering. This would have would have been brought in a time when when 
people and relationships had been torn apart. Uh, they had wronged someone and, and, and they needed to restore the wrong that, that, that had been done. They needed redemption. Um, they, they had violated someone in some way or violated God in some way, and they needed to make it right. And all of these offerings were a form of prayer for Israel. They were to bring God their need and they were to bring their need before the priest and the priest helped them determine what need needed to be met and how that need was going to be met and, and helped them offer their prayer to God so that they, so they could go to God to meet their needs. You just read a story from uh, the Gospel of Mark in chapter 11, where Jesus, he's he's ridden into Jerusalem on this donkey as the coming Messiah and Savior of the world. And he goes into the temple and what he sees does not please him. There are all these merchants and people set up in the court of the Gentiles who were sell buying and selling things. And, and this place was supposed to be a place where people who were not Israelites, Gentiles, foreigners could come and pray and seek the God of Israel to help them in time of need. But because they had turned it into a marketplace for profit and they had corrupted this place, foreigners weren't able to come and seek God in prayer. And this angered Jesus. So he drove them out and cleared out the corruption in the temple saying, my house is supposed to be a house of prayer for the nations. This is supposed to be a place of welcoming so that all people can come and seek God. No one in Christ is to be considered a foreigner and a stranger anymore. Because of Jesus, everyone is welcomed into the family of God. And so this story challenges us to ask ourselves, as followers of Jesus, how are we living? Do our lives create a space of welcome for those far from God to come and seek him in their time of need? Or do we act in such a way that does not honor God, that is not Christ-like, that causes people to not want to have anything to do with God, his people, or his son Jesus? Does it cause a separation? Have we corrupted that space that's supposed to be a safe place for others to be able to come? and seek God through us as, as we lead them as a priest uh, to, to bring their need before God in prayer. Also, are you a follower of Jesus or are you a foreigner and a stranger? Have you yet to develop a life-giving relationship with him? And what is it that's keeping you from him? If it's other people who say that they are believers, I can assure you that if they are not acting Christ-like, that is not what Jesus is like. Jesus is good and he is loving and he wants to welcome you with open arms. You are welcome at his table. You are welcome in his presence to bring your need before him because he is the only one who can save you from your sin, who can restore you, who can heal you, who can meet the needs that you have. So I challenge you, if you do not know yet, yet know Christ, run to him, bring your need to him, go find a follower of his and ask them how it is they can seek the salvation that Jesus offers. And if you're a believer and you've been challenged by today's message, that perhaps you're not living in such a way that creates a safe place for others to seek Jesus, would you repent and confess your sin before Jesus? Bring your need before him, that he might enable you to be that light to others, that he might enable you to offer his self-giving love to others, to create that safe place for others to seek him.